There are many things that you can do when you're putting out a form of entertainment. And lots of things. There are a couple of things you cannot do. One, you can't mislead or lie to your audience. Two, don't be boring. Like among so many other things to do or not do, those are the two most fundamental tenets to me. Is don't lie to or mislead your audience. Do what you say you're going to do. Follow through on what you promise you're going to do. And never be boring. You can be bad. You could be like train wreck bad because sometimes things can become so bad that they become great in their own way. But they will be memorable one way or another. Boring can be forgotten and you don't ever want to be forgotten. And talking about Survivor Series 2021, we shouldn't have had high expectations going into this because we knew what we were dealing with here. This was a show that the company largely didn't care about. So if they don't care about it, they're not being bothered with it very much. Why should the fans care about it? Why should we be bothered by it very much? It's, it's the fact though that you can't mislead or lie to your audience. Now, some of this is the fans jumping to their own conclusions and wanting to think their own things. But it is hard and kind of foolish to blame the fans when everything that you do leads them to draw an obvious conclusion that you knew you weren't going to be able to deliver upon. You have Survivor Series being sponsored by Red Notice, which is The Rock's new Netflix movie with Ryan Le Reynolds. You're hyping up before the show that it's the 25th anniversary of The Rock's debut going back to Survivor Series 1996. You spend all night showing different assorted highlights of The Rock's career. You even decide you're going to throw in some dumbass thing with Vince McMahon and this damn Cleopatra egg. He's showing it off and then when it's gone he's looking for his egg. You've got a battle royal match in honor of The Rock's 25th anniversary where you're basically referring to it as The Rock's anniversary battle royal. During the main event, it appears you have Roman even break out a freaking rock bottom. All of that. And The Rock is nowhere to be found. He's not appearing. There's no live satellite feed, no interview. There's no even like pre-recorded tape thing. Nothing. Now, most fans should have known that The Rock wasn't going to be there. We can talk about logic and being connected to reality. It's fair to say. But when a company goes so far out of their way to apparently make something so obvious that it's going to happen, or at least gives you so many clues or indications or hints that it could happen, you shouldn't be surprised when your audience, your customers, draw a said conclusion, and then really shouldn't be surprised when they have some backlash against the fact that the one thing they were clinging on to thinking it was going to happen, didn't happen on this show. That's not okay. The WWE knew damn good and well what was going to happen if they did this and didn't follow through. They had to know. And I don't know which is worse. If you tell me they did know and didn't care, or that they didn't know. It might be the didn't know is worse. But fuck God, the show could have used something. You could even hear it in the Barclays Center crowd like they were sitting on their hands for a lot of this night. And why is that? Because not only did it ultimately lead to a much ado about nothing, it was fucking misleading to and if flat out misinforming the audience, like sending them in one direction and not doing it. The even bigger, more egregious violation to me, as bad as that first one is, is this show was goddamn Boring. Not the worst Survivor Series of all time. Certainly not. The most boring? It might be, and that's even worse. Now, going into the show, what are the stakes? What matters? 
Why should we care? If you don't care, why should we? If the matches don't have consequences, if they don't have a purpose, then why the fuck are you doing them? You're not appealing to an audience that sits there and just gets off on the dream match that doesn't have any fucking stipulations or any type of consequences, ramifications, or repercussions associated with them. You can't do that. It makes no sense. And then you go into this show, and yet again it seems like you just totally sweep aside one of your brands and SmackDown outside of the main event, but the reality is it doesn't fucking matter. We know Vince doesn't care, and it won't even treat it like it's any type of thing. There will be absolutely no follow-up to it. This was just horrible. Like, you look at Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. First off, I know Charlotte Flair ain't talking about who the real anybody is. Bitch, how many plastic surgeries you got? Shut the fuck up and sit down. And maybe, just maybe, Charlotte's matches would be better if she didn't botch every goddamn marquee signature move that she does. This botchy bitch, holy hell. But here's what I don't understand. Outside of... You have more fans that seem like we're focused on what Becky Lynch was wearing here and was she being too provocative or too sexy for being a heel? Is it a valid question? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention, frankly. By the way, you did see people tweeting about this. But here's what I don't understand. You have all this shit out there in the dirt sheets, out on the internet. This is a match that's supposed to have some real-life tension behind it. And you throw this match out there first. And weren't they just a little bit before the show starting saying that this was actually going to be the main event? Either way, it shouldn't have been in the fucking curtain jerker spot. And when we get to the finish of the match, you understand it because you're not trying to hurt one champion for the benefit of the other, but it's just fucking lame, Becky doing the whole thing. I mean, it was well executed, but well executed can still be lame. And this was lame. And the sad thing is this is one of the better matches on the show. You got the five-on-five five men's Survivor Series match. It took so goddamn long to get through everybody's entrances. I just didn't care by the time you actually got to the match. And again, what were the consequences here? What was the importance of this match? What was at stake? What was there to risk? Nothing. So why should I care? And then Seth Rollins as a sole survivor, really? We're going to party like it's 2015 or 2016 again? Are you setting him up to win the goddamn Royal Rumble? Oh, I hope not. Why not Lashley? Or Drew. Or Xavier Woods. Or maybe you do something like with Jeff Hardy. Like all these other options. And just settling with Seth Rollins just feels like bleh. But again, boring. The 25-man battle royal. Really just felt like one big commercial for fucking Pizza Hut. I mean, holy Christ. You got the Street Profits doing the shit with the tasty tri or triple threat box. Whatever the fuck it's called. Who gives a shit? Like, there was more focus and emphasis placed on Pizza Hut, and I'm not against, like, trying to make your money, blah, 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 but holy hell. Like, even afterwards, you know, you knew Almas was going to get a big push here. Not surprised that he won, eliminated, what was it, 12 damn people, whatever it was. But it seemed like even once that happened, the bigger spotlight, the bigger focus, the more important thing was on the goddamn pizza. Pizza! It's bad enough on the week that they released eight talents before this show because they want to undercut their own goddamn PR. You got Vince sitting there talking about, here's my egg that's worth $100 million, like tone deaf and every fucking thing. And then you got throwing pizza out in the goddamn crowd. You shouldn't even bother having the match. Like, yeah. And obviously you want to give almost, almost the spotlight here. I keep fucking up his name. I'm so sorry. But you look at almost and you say, Okay, you spotlight him. Now what? Just say it. RKO bro. RK bro, excuse me. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Versus the Usos. You know, even if the match is solid, why the fuck do I care? What's at risk here? What's at stake? You can't get invested, then you don't care. And you heard this throughout the night with that Barclay Center crowd. They couldn't get invested because there was not much to get invested in. So why the hell would they care? And it came across when you're watching it on pay-per-view. This crowd was fucking dead for most of the night. Unbelievable. And then you get to that five-on-five -five women's Survivor Series match and holy fuck. 
the crowd really didn't care. Like they're doing the wave at one point in time and you chaining CM Punk and all this other shit. And usually I'd you say that's fucking stupid. Like you, you paid your money to get in there so you could sit there and say that shit. That said though, can you really blame them? Because this was a god awful abortion. You could have had something set up for Survivor Series where with Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair one on one, a match with heat, a match with history, a match that would have been a follow up to one of your main events for your WrestleMania weekend this year. So many other things you could have went to. And instead, no, you just kind of bury him in the fucking middle here. And it's like, what the fuck? So they're a part of a much bigger match of a schmoz. And even though Bianca was a sole survivor, it feels like she stood out less, not more, by being associated with this diarrhea of a match. Just couldn't give us Sasha and Bianca one-on-one, could, could you? Just had to put them in as part of the group. Oh, God, this is fucking terrible. And even by the time I got to the main event, I was mostly cashed out. If it wasn't for the fact that it was our tribal chief, the head of the table, I wouldn't have even bothered watching. Because it was that boring. I mean, in Big E versus Roman, this is a pretty good match. But by this point in time, people were so bored, they only had one thing to cling to. And that was they were waiting to see how The Rock would be involved and how The Rock would come. And then when The Rock didn't fucking come, it's like, oh, what the hell? Was this really the only match that SmackDown won? And maybe, just maybe, here's a polite suggestion. We should stop putting the two world champions against each other where you inevitably have to have one win and one lose. It's just not good business. It really isn't. And especially in this way, like you have Roman beat him clean, which is cool in and of itself. But, yeah. Okay, now what? And that's the predominant feeling I had coming out of this show. Is, okay, now what? It was a gigantic waste of fucking time. And certainly wasn't anything that made you really stand up and say, wow, this was great, or wow, this is awesome, or wow, this is the best way for me to spend my time on a Sunday night. You got none of that here. So not only could you logically, rationally feel like you were misled by the WWE, if not somewhat lied to, even if it was an indirect, roundabout kind of way, and that's going to piss you off. She should be pissed off about even more because on that part I could say, well, you should have known that was coming. The fact that they were so unconcerned with just how bad this show was going to be. They clearly didn't care. The WWE was comfortable and perfectly accommodating to choosing to bore the fucking brakes off of you. Like the best news of all that I heard of the entire night was that day one pay-per-view on January 1st, 2022 on that Saturday. That's their next pay-per-view. It means we don't have one in September. Thank fucking God at this point. If this is the type of shit you're going to put out there. Like you'd be a lot of things with the show. But don't ever, ever, ever be boring. That is the worst. This show, beyond a shadow of a doubt, even from a WWE standpoint, is one of the more boring pay-per-views I have watched in a long, long time.